that is being uh, organized uh, and we are particularly talking about this website vlab.co.in where you can find a lot of uh, animation and simulation on different uh, experiments and we are in fact going to use one of it today and this workshop uh, is uh, being organized uh, from 20 to 22nd July so the lecture is a part of this uh, particular event so before I really start uh, with the event let me just uh, uh, give you a brief on what we are going to talk about today so if you're working in a lab most of you must have seen this instrument that is basically a spectrometer uh, this is an optical device and it has got some uh, very important application and I'm going to briefly discuss about its part before we really go into the simulation um, and uh, the topic for this would be spectrometer and its application uh, I'm Dr. Sandeep Paul Chaudhary uh, you can uh, send me your queries on the YouTube channel uh, waves or you can also contact me on Facebook uh, before we really start with this, uh, what is a spectrometer? A spectrometer is a scientific instrument. Uh, what happens is whenever you have a signal and you might to divide the signal into its components and if you really want to do that, you usually need a spectrometer and there are different kinds of spectrometer for dividing these signals. Uh, today we are just going to talk about the optical instrument here so if you consider something like a visible light and uh, let's say for example the white light and you are dividing it into seven different colors we are talking about a spectrum here and this can also be obtained by using a spectrometer and uh, we can measure uh, the property or uh, we can actually look into these narrow bands of different colors and they comprise what we call as the spectrum on the other hand if you have heard about this term this is called a mass spectrometer and if you have the molecules of a gas uh, which might be composed of different uh, atoms uh, they can be determined by using a mass spectrometer the spectrometer are used in astronomy as well to analyze the chemical composition of stars and planets uh, in fact the composition of the Sun is also determined by these spectrometer techniques and it uh, actually gathers a lot of data on the origin of the universe so what we're going to talk about today is about a spectrometer which is placed uh, or used uh, in your normal day-to-day uh, -day lab experiments uh, and forms a very important part of your syllabus when you are doing your experiment based on optics so a spectrometer usually has got three main parts and if you look into this, so we basically have a collimator. A collimator usually makes the ray of light parallel and it keeps the focus on. And then we have the prism table. And as you can see from the diagram, we have a prism which is placed on the prism table. Uh, but then the prism is not a part of the spectrometer because in place of the prism, we can also place this particular setup which can hold a grating. So it might be a prism or it might be a grating which is placed on a prism table. And finally, the third part of the spectrometer is telescope. All of them are arranged in such a way that they are movable and they can also be fixed by using the screws which is right now not visible in this picture. But uh, you need to consider here that a spectrometer in general has got three parts, the collimator, the prism table and the telescope. One more important point to note here is there are two scales from which the readings uh, should be noted down and these are the vernier scales and when we do our experiment we fix one of them as vernier 1 and the other one as vernier 2. During the course of the entire experiment you should not be interchanging the verniers it should always remain fixed as 1 and 2. Now before we really start with any kind of experiment with a spectrometer we definitely want to look into a term which is called the least count. Now least count is basically a measuring the minimum okay so any instrument will give you a minimum measurement for example your watch the minimum that it can measure is one second and beyond that it will give you an error. So uh, that is basically termed as least count for the least count is nothing but the smallest value that can be measured by a measuring instrument 
and these values are only good up to this value. Let's take uh, some examples. Uh, for example, you can consider a meter scale and if you consider a meter scale, it has got the minimum division of one millimeter as in this example in this picture. So that means the least count is one millimeter. That means it cannot measure beyond one millimeter. This instrument is a vernier caliper which you must have seen in your lab and uh, if not today might be in some other lecture you can uh, see this that uh, the vernier caliper the least count measurements can be done and sh actually it's a part of the experiment okay so for a vernier caliper the minimum that it can be measured is 0 0.1 millimeter so that means uh, one decimal place better compared to a meter scale on the other hand if you consider a micrometer or uh, we can consider a screw gauge the measurement that you can do is up to 0 0.01 millimeter so that's what is least count is all about and this is the concept we are going to use to find out the least count of a spectrometer as well before we go with the experiment but before that we should know some important conversions one of the most important conversion is one degree is 60 minutes and one minute is equal to 60 seconds so please remember this because we are going to use this for finding out the least count. So if you look into the vernier scale, this is something which you are also going to see in our uh, setup. So before we continue with the presentation, let's look into the simulations uh, from the uh, website. So this is the website that we are going to use to look into the simulation that is vlab.co.in. And if you just go into the main website, okay, and let me just give you a brief on this. If you just directly go into the main website, what you can see here is um, the topics which are listed. And uh, you can see that we have uh, a broad area, uh, whichever topic you want to study. For, for today, for this class, we are going to talk about uh, physical science. And more specifically, we are going to talk about optics. So let's just scroll down to optics here and we are going to go for the optics virtual lab. Once we open the page for optics virtual lab, what we're going to see is the list of experiment under optics. And we are going to check for angle of prism. So we can directly go to this. And then we have got a new page where we can actually uh, do the simulation for angle of prism. So let's uh, click here and uh, start the simulator. So uh, it's important that you note uh, that when you do this, your browser should be updated. Uh, for me, I'm using Google Chrome. You can use a different browser like uh, uh, Opera and all, but that should be updated. And if you have used the simulation more than once in your browser, it usually loads faster. So I've already used it once, so it loads faster, else it might take a bit of time. What you do initially is uh, this is your telescope, this is your uh, prism table, and this is your collimator. And then uh, before you can start, because you can see that the start option is grayed down, what you do is you focus the telescope so you can move this uh, uh, cursor here, okay? And then as you keep on moving, you can see that this gets focused. If it is not focused, the start button doesn't get activated, and you should not. Uh, uh, you should keep it within this range so you can see this is more or less focused and then you can go for start now as soon as you start you see this is the image that i have shown you and this is the setup so this is your telescope and this is your eyepiece through which you are going going to have your field of view and when you look through this you look something like this since the light is off so it is totally dark and then there is a crosshair which is attached and then there are two verniers. This vernier is fixed to be vernier 1 and this is fixed as vernier 2. Okay. And if you keep on moving the telescope, you can see that the vernier keeps on moving. So I'll just go back to the slide and tell you how exactly to take the vernier reading. So you can see this is something which you are going to see in real. When you're looking into a lab experiment, uh, um, uh, you will see this part and this part. Okay. And then you can use a magnifying glass to look into it. The simulation helps you to look into it directly without using any external magnifying glass. So let's just go back into our presentation and we can just look into the vernier reading now. Now if you look into this, uh, you see that this is your vernier scale and this is your main scale. So look into the vernier scale. There are 30 divisions. 
please note vernier scale doesn't have any unit you have to compare it with the main scale and then do the conversions appropriately okay and then if you look into the main scale this is your main scale now a uh, spectrometer is actually having a circular scale and hence all the measurements that you do are in degree radian minutes or seconds so it's not in centimeter and not in millimeter and hence the calculation for the least count becomes a bit different uh, when we compare it with a vernier caliper okay so let's just look into the calculation of least count so if you can look here i think this uh, you have come across when you do it for vernier caliper also that how many divisions of the vernier scale coincides with the main scale so let's just go back to the diagram again and you can see how many divisions of vernier scale are there there are 30 so you can count it 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay we have 5 here and then 5 more then 5 more and so on and if you make the total it's 30 so that 30 vernier scale division is equal to 29 main scale division now before i go into this you can look here let's just have a look between 170 and 160 or 160 and 170 you will see that there are uh, longer lines longer divisions which actually corresponds to one degree and the shorter division will actually correspond to half degree so that means between 160 and 170 there are 20 divisions if you add up the longer scales and the shorter scales so if you count it it's one two three four five okay and then again five then again five and so on if you keep on counting you will be getting that there are 20 divisions so it's 160 to 170 so that's 10 degree divided by 20 division so that is 0 0.5 degree each so one main scale division is 0 0.5 degree and if you look into the coincident part you'll see that if you count from 0 to 30 the amount of space that it occupies on the vernier scale is equivalent to the amount of space 29 divisions is occupying in the main scale okay hence 30 vernier scale division is equal to 29 main scale division so that means by unitary method one vernier scale division is equal to 29 by 30 main scale division if you go by the definition of least count least count is given as one main scale division minus one vernier scale division now I can write down one vernier scale division as 29 by 30 so it's 1 minus 29 by 30 main scale division that is 1 by 30 main scale division what is one main scale division equal to that's 0 0.5 degree so it is 1 divided by 30 into 0 0.5 so that means that uh, what you can do here is the least count measurement is nothing but uh, what is 0 0.5 so I can write it as half okay so that means it's 1 divided by 60 degree now if you go by the conversion 1 by 60 degree is equal to 1 minute okay so this is our least count for this particular instrument okay so let's uh, go to the next slide and then try to know how we actually take the total reading now when you move your telescope okay when you move your telescope we are going to look into the simulation for that let's say a particular position is this okay the same old slide or the same old figure a particular position is this how do we are going to take the total reading from this okay so before we go to this let me just give you some brief on the main scale reading so you should know the main scale reading where do you get that you get it from here so the value which is nearer to zero will give you the main scale reading okay you have to keep in mind the main scale reading will always be the lower value what do i mean by that you can see that the zero of the vernier scale is between 155 and 155.5 degree okay so that means which value i should take well i should always take the low value so the value that i should consider is 155 degree and not 155.5 degree so that is very important and then we consider the vernier scale reading and the vernier scale reading is given here so you can check from 0 to 30 whichever division on the main scale 
coincides with the vernier scale will give you the vernier scale reading so in this case you can see that the 15th division of the vernier scale coincides with one of the divisions with which it coincides doesn't matter but it coincides with one of the divisions of the main scale hence our vernier scale would be 15 so we know the least count now which is nothing but one minute or one divided by 60 degree and then we can find out the total reading the total reading is given by the main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading into least count so please note here the vernier scale reading is just a numeric value without any unit when you multiply it with the least count you get the unit as degree so you have the unit as degree here you have the main scale reading unit as degree here so the total reading will be in degree okay so in this example we have the total reading as 165 which is the main scale reading you can check here okay uh, sorry there is a mistake here it's not 165 it should be 155 okay it's 155 plus vernier scale reading that's 15 so we'll put 15 into 160 okay so that's important and let's just consider this as 155 okay so it's 155 plus 0 0.25 so the total reading is 155.25 degree okay so please note this so that's how you take the total reading now what are the applications of this uh, spectrometer that you're going to use we can actually find out the refractive index of the material of the prism so a prism is usually made up of glass we can find out the refractive index of that we can also know about the laws of reflection we can prove the laws of reflection using the spectrometer we can find out the angle of prism which we are going to do we are also going to determine the Cauchy constant okay and we can also find out the diffraction grating uh, uh, values okay or, or the experiment dealing with diffraction grating and we can also find out the resolving power of a prism and finally the dispersive power of a prism so the part that we are going to do today using the simulation is find out the angle of the prism and for this you must have this table ready okay uh, if you're going to my YouTube channel, I will put a link uh, to download this particular Excel sheet so that you can write down the values and find out your answer, which we are going to check now. And then if you want to find out the refractive index of the prism, you need to use this particular setup. But this we are going to leave it for the next class because uh, we are not going to find out the refractive index for this particular class. Okay. So the setup will be something like this and we are going to look into more detail of this. Okay so this is also actually this setup is particularly important for finding out the refractive index of the prism and not the angle of the prism okay uh, this will skip for now and what is the conclusion well the important part whenever do you are doing any kind of experiment is that you should be well acquainted with the questions that might be asked in your viva and some of the important questions that I've listed here are what is a monochromatic light okay so you should know about the wavelength of light if there is a single wavelength it's monochromatic and so on these kind of definitions should be important to you what is the angle of prism what is the angle of minimum deviation I'll definitely leave it up to you to find out the answer what is refractive index that's very important so the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in medium okay that will actually give you an idea about the refractive index there are other definitions also which you can find out and then what are its unit where well, refractive index is more or less unitless so you don't have any unit for that and then what is the relation between angle of incidence and angle of deviation then you again need to go back to the uh, to the definition of uh, refractive index how to find out the refractive index angle of minimum deviation so on and then how does the angle of deviation vary with wavelength well does the angle of deviation depend on wavelength and on what factor or factors does the angle of deviation depend and which eyepiece is used in telescope of a spectrometer so these are some few questions which you definitely need to study and you can check that out okay and uh, so now we are going to shift to the vlab.co.in that's all for this uh, particular presentation and let's just go back to the website and try to simulate okay so if we try to simulate this okay and let's go back here okay and let's see what we need to do so I have already focused my telescope now I need to look through the telescope I need to see something out there so I'll basically switch on the light so in your lab mostly you'd be using a sodium vapor lamp 
okay and then you can use this to focus the slit so what you can do is you can adjust the telescope so that this uh, image comes exactly at the center or near the crosshair okay and then what you can do is you can adjust the focus so when you adjust the focus of the telescope you can see that the intensity keeps change changing and it becomes finer and better and if I go on the other end it becomes slightly distorted so let's just keep it at this particular position maybe yeah this is fine and then we can adjust the slip width so if you increase the slip width too much you can see that too much of light comes in and that is not something which is uh, uh, acceptable okay we'll just keep the slit as narrow as possible and we'll keep it this much okay and then what we do we place the prism so we'll place the prism we've not gone into the diagram of a prism but you'll see that the prism will have three sides this side this particular position is opaque so light cannot pass so we cannot see anything on the telescope okay or on the field of view and on the other two side we have got the two reflection sides so what happens is the light from this uh, collimator will get in and it will be reflected along this particular direction and it will also be reflected along this particular direction. Let's try to find out the image. For this, what we have to do is move the telescope and whenever you do it in your lab or even in the simulation, you have to move it a bit slow. And let's try to move it slowly. And as we keep on moving this, see, we have got this position. Now, our next aim is actually to put this uh, image of the slit at the crosshair or the center of the crosshair for this we can actually use the fine adjustment so we can keep everything in the same screen and let's try to do the fine adjustment so it's moving in the other direction so let's try to move it here okay so you see we can just move it slowly it depends on how sensitive your mouse is okay so my mouse is not that sensitive but let's try it okay so I'm keeping on moving it okay so I think this is almost fine okay and it moves a bit on this side so what you can do is and it moves a bit too much okay so I'll just do a bit of shifting here it becomes a bit difficult with the smoothness of your mouse so I think this is more or less okay 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 so we can actually use the telescope directly to move it okay let's try if we can fix it somewhere in better position yeah, I think this is fine okay so we have this position now what we have to do you have to note down the values now for noting down the values you must have your table ready uh, uh, for your convenience I've already made the table but you can definitely make it in your Excel sheet that's a very simple Excel sheet and we are going to find out what is the angle of prism here so let's check what is phase one so this is my phase one so this particular position is phase one this is my vernier one this is my phase two this is my vernier two so in phase one we have got two vernier readings this is vernier one and this is vernier two so let's just look into the values now so we have the vernier reading so we can have to take the main scale reading and the vernier scale reading so you can see the main scale reading the zero coincides or it's very near okay it doesn't exactly coincide it's very near to 310 this is 320 so before that it must be 310 this is 315 so this is 310 so our main scale reading would be 310 so can we put that value now here okay so let's just put this value as 310 okay and then let's go back and check the vernier reading so let's see which which is the coinciding uh, value so if you look into this you see that this is slowly shifting and this is getting shifted on the other side and as we keep on moving this side you see here that this value more or less coincides in a good way right so this is more or less 12 okay so this is 10 11 the 12th so the 12th uh, scale coincides so let me just uh, or is it 12 okay let's just take this okay 10 11 12 okay so this uh, sorry uh, this is uh, 30 so this is 10 12 14 okay so this is 12 right so we'll put it as 12 so we'll put the vernier reading as uh, 12 okay and as soon as I put it 12 I put it on the formula the answer is 310.2 so what's the formula the formula is uh, simple we have taken this and we have taken this and multiplied by 1 by 60 and when we have found out this to be 310.2 okay let's check uh, um, the second vernier okay the second vernier reading so if we can find that out okay let's go this so if you can check this near zero it is nothing but 130 and let's just take the vernier reading it's uh, uh, let's let's take it to be it's 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 probably 11 okay we can consider it to be 11 or even 10 okay 10 is a bit far okay so let's just take it to be 11 so it is 130 and 11 okay 
so can we take that so that is our one year two so it is 130 and this is nothing but 11 so we have our readings here okay let's go for phase two now let's check this phase two what I'll do is I'll take the telescope uh, make sure you don't move the prism uh, anyway in the simulation you cannot really move it but in reality you might be uh, tempted to move but you better not move that okay so we have found this okay let's try to adjust this again at the center of the crosshair okay for better accuracy center of the crosshair is the best okay so this is more or less okay okay and let's see here so you can check here this is one eight, this is 80 this is 70 and then if you go here you can check this this is actually uh, between once uh, between 70 and 69.5 when we are going to take the lower value so we are going to take 69.5 okay so just going to consider 69.5 okay and once we take that let's take the vernier scale reading and uh, what's our vernier scale reading here let's check the values okay and if you go through this uh, okay so this is getting shifted on the other side so you can see this value more or less coincides so that's your uh, 18th uh, reading so let's take it to be 18 okay so you can look into it closer okay since we are doing it uh, at a faster pace might be maybe making some errors but you can always look into the greater detail okay and then let's look here on the other side on the other side we have uh, the value at around uh, 249.5 that's the low value so let's take it to be 249.5 uh, so it's 249.5 uh, and then let's go for the vernier scale reading if you go for the vernier scale reading let's check this out okay you can see that this value more or less coincides fine okay this is even better so we can that's that's uh, nothing but uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so we can take it to be 7 so let's uh, take it to be 7 and see what's our result okay so you see you have got vernier 2 and vernier 1 and you've got this and now let's take the difference so difference between this and this now you might be tempted to write down this as 310.2 minus 69.8 but that's actually not correct because let's just look into this let's go back to the original value okay we are not going to write down any readings here so you see this uh, keep a keep a note on this one year one reading okay you have got here at 310 approx and as we keep on moving on this side you see that this is going to 330 340 350 and then zero so that means it has crossed 360 okay as you come from phase one to phase two so since it has crossed 360 as you come from phase 1 to phase 2 on vernier 1 hence the formula for difference would be different okay the formula would be you have to uh, uh, take 360 okay and then subtract uh, this particular value okay and then you need to add this value and that's the difference that you are going to get which is 119.6 I hope you get it it's not very difficult the point here is that when you are taking the difference between the position on phase 1 and phase 2 and in that process if the vernier crosses the 360 mark the formula for difference would be this so that 360 minus the phase 1 value plus the phase 2 value okay secondly if you go here you see that this is not cross 360 how can we know that let's just check it again okay so let's just go here okay and let's just fix it on this end and then let's just let's keep it approximately somewhere here you can see here that this is at around uh, 130 near about okay and let's just keep on moving to the other side and as we keep on going okay we can find out the other value it has gone uh, to somewhere near around uh, 250 so that means it has not crossed 360 so here we can use a very simple formula one value minus the other so we can just take the larger value okay or the mod of the difference of the two values so you can take this minus this so what is our result here 119.6 119.433 and then we have an average of these two which would be nothing but 119.51 okay and then if you divide it you get the angle of the prism which is a so you can see here that prism is basically an equilateral triangle so it is uh, expected that the angle should be more or less near 60 degree don't be too accurate if you're doing your experiments honestly you're definitely going to get a result which might not be exactly 60 okay might not be that accurate because you are using or believing in your human eye 
So the result that we get is uh, 60 degree. So this simulation is of great help, okay, if you are at your home and uh, not really able to access your lab facility. I hope it helps, okay, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm.